everybody. It's good morning, everybody. It's Wondrous Wednesday again at Things Crafty, and I'm Kira. That's and I'm Elisa. <laughs> and today we are going to talk about and show you jelly plates. And jelly plates are a gel type of printing plate that you can use to do monoprints. And they come in this cool clamshell package that you can use to store it. And it has this like instruction manual, but it's really so simple to use that once you get started, um, it's it's really fun. So I uh, have actually this is the first time I've cracked open my jelly plate, so I'm a jelly plate virgin. But Alisa, <laughs> I've got mine nice and dirty. <laughs> As you can see, mine is not so clean. Yours is still in the pack. Um, I've had mine a lot longer, but you do not have to clean these jelly plates. That's one of the things about them, and I don't usually. Unless there's certain colors that I want to do, I actually leave the, the paint on there, and I keep using it because when you re-wet this, you'll get some really interesting looks. But it's kind of like a, a jelly, flexible, you know, kind of squishy feel to it, and they're really cool. Um, there's so much you can do with them. I just wanted to show you some of the different things that I've done. You can layer and layer and layer. And if you see a lot of these mixed media pieces, you a lot of them are probably done with jelly plates because you can start and make one print and let it dry, and then you keep keep adding different layers to it. And these are just some of the ones that I've done. We'll add pictures to the blog at thingscrafty.com so you can see some of these up closer. I know on on camera it's a little hard to see but just you can see there's so much texture built up on these and it's so simple to do with a jelly plate here I've used some big bubble wrap so you can use bubble wrap you can use stencils you can use punchinella so here so here's just some stencils that I did so really the idea is to, to build up your layers and obviously you do need to let them dry in between layers to get a really cool effect but you know just try experimenting with it and trying different things this is a stencil actually from Fiskars that I had and I made a really cool print almost like a batik look you know this is one that was done with a stencil and uh, different colors so you can put multiple colors on together you can do one single color you can use rubber stamps you can use stencils you can use punchinella really the sky is the limit I mean, if you want something as simple as like dots, this was done through a stencil, and here's another look. So you can get totally different looks with the same stencil. That's that's one there, and here's the other. So here's here's another funky one I did. <laughs> so you can actually pull the paint through, like with um, some different tools. Like they have these different combs, so you can do that too. You can pull the paint through and get some different looks as well. So Kira's going to do a demo, and uh, you know we'll show you more afterwards. Okay. So here I have a tray full of stuff that I'm going to show you how to use. So basically, the jelly plate really works best with an acrylic paint. Um, these are Liquitex Basics, and actually my Michael's store had a sale, and I got um, three for $10, so I just went and stocked up. And today I'm going to do like a yellow, red, green type of color scheme because another thing that happens is um, if you just keep printing and printing and you go really fast, your colors will come together and you might want to choose a palette before you start instead of just throwing all kinds of paint on there. Um, so you need some tools. The major tool that you need is a brayer to spread the paint because it's got to be spread um, thin across the entire plate. And you want to make sure that your brayer is relatively clean and doesn't have like lumps and bumps stuck to it because any texture that you have is going to transfer onto the plate. So I do have some small and large bubble wrap ready to go. I have punchinella. This is a punchinella that's um, like flower shapes. So I got that one that was very exciting. I can't wait to try that. And then this one is um, like a rounded star flower kind of a shape. 
And then I do have some stencils from Crafters Workshop. This one is the Crazy Flowers one, and I've got a Harlequin pattern and some dots. I mean, I, I might not use all of these, but I'm just, this is what came to mind the, when I started going through my studio to pull things out and see what I could use for texture. So these are shade text rubbing sheets that we use a lot for polymer clay, but I do have a suspicion that they're going to work really well on my printing plate. So they do. I, took, I took those out. This is a um, another like a texture sheet for polymer clay. This is something I just got from Polyform, and I was noticing that one of the tools is this really cool comb. So yes. I'm definitely going to use that. And I was also thinking that these um, dots would be kind of cool too. So, I think all of those would work really cool. Yeah, I have yeah. that same set. So I can't wait to play with those. Yeah. Those are so fun. <laughs> uh, and then some other things that I have, I have these fabric stamps that are like foam. And I have a key and a bird. So I'm definitely going to use those. And I have some regular stamps. This one has words on it, and this one is like a dot pattern. I, re I love this one. I always use it for things. And then this is a mounted block rubber stamp that's got flowers. And Actually, one of the things you do need to think about if you're using text is when you print it, if it's going to turn out the right direction. Yeah. So you need to think about that a little if you're going to use text. Mm -hmm. Wow, look at how clean your jelly plate is. I they know. <laughs> it's clean. They recommend it's flat store, too. You know, like you could put it on a piece of like copy paper, but it needs to be stored flat. Yeah. I like to do it on a piece of copy paper, you know, just have this piece of copy paper underneath it. Mm -hmm. And then I put it on a pan, actually, is how I did it. Okay. You know? Well, I mean, I'm planning on keeping mine inside the clamshell. So. Yeah. And this is the protective film, so I'm just going to remove that from the top of the plate and save that for later. Okay, and then the last tool head. You can see me. Hi, because my table is glass. <laughs> um, the, the last tool I have here is a brush stick by Sukaneko. Um, I know the light, in fact, you know, it's crazy. I don't even have a light on in my studio, but it seems too bright. Um, it's a brush stick, and it's got like a flexible rubber tip, so I'm going to use that to draw like designs in here. So then, of course, you want to have paper, ample, ample amount of paper on your surface here because it's going to start, it's going to go very fast once you yeah. get started. Yeah, so, I have found that I keep a stack around because you do one print and you're like, holy mackerel, this is the coolest thing ever. So you're like, okay, where's my next piece of paper? And then you <laughs> want to keep doing it because you can pull more than one print a lot of times. It depends on the thickness of the paint that you that you put onto your jelly plate. So right. sometimes you can pull multiple prints. So right. you definitely want to have a stack of paper handy. Because mm. I can tell you that from experience that I've gotten to the point where I've I've had something so cool and then it dried on me too much by the time I found the paper I wanted to use. So definitely have that ready to go. Yeah, and clear off some surfaces in your room because you then you need a place to lay them all out while they dry. <laughs> yeah, like the whole floor of my studio is usually covered. <laughs> right, so right now my cat is asleep next to my feet, so hopefully he won't decide to get up and start walking around. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I've got like a stack of this Ecru paper, and actually I, I find, um, because I've done mono printing just on the glass tabletop before, and I find a lot of times that the second print is much more interesting than the first. You're right. So, I, because the first print tends to have a lot of paint on it. So you'll see what I mean in a second here. So I'm going to go ahead and just start by putting just dabs of paint, and I'm expecting that they're going to blend colors. So, you don't need a lot of paint. That's a, yeah. that's a thing. Yeah. So then you just, um, if you notice, you pick up the brayer. Don't just go like this, because then it, that moves the, the paint exactly in the same spot. You pick it up, and you move it around, and you go pretty quick. And then you, where they come together in the middle, you get like a gradient blend.
And then you start playing by just like pressing these things in various places. You can even use a little bit of cheesecloth to impart a texture. And then you go ahead and lay some paper on there and press firmly. And when you peel it back, you end up with all those things that you touched the the pad, you know, that you touch the plate with, they come off onto the paper. Very cool look. Yeah, you def you definitely don't want to use anything that could damage your plate when you do this. Yeah. So, you know, not, don't use anything sharp, but, <laughs> you know, flexible stamps and, you know, rubber stamps and things work great. And at any point, you can keep adding paint onto your jelly plate, too. Right. Those foam stamps tend, yeah, see what that did? Looks awesome. Yeah. That, um, the interesting thing here is that the, the bird, I had actually inked that bird with some alcohol ink. And you can see that the paint sort of reactivated it. So that's very cool. Is that metallic? This? Mm -hmm. No, it's just green. Oh, okay. It's green. And in fact, because I'm changing from red to green, you know what happens when you mix red and green? Blobs. They're, they're complementary <laughs> colors. So I've got my baby wipes here to wipe off my brayer so that I don't get too much of that residual red in there. And then I want to add some yellow with this one, too. So you can see that this jelly plate printing is actually a really quick process. And you can actually create a whole bunch of stuff really fast. Right. And, you know, when I print a lot of times, I'll go um, one direction and then I'll switch and go the opposite direction, too, to get another cool look with the brayer. Yeah. So here, let's play with the Harlequin. What happens here is you press this on and you can see maybe that it's like coming in contact with the paint. So there's going to be two different kinds of prints here. The print where I go right through. Yep, I hear a motorcycle. <laughs> yeah, I do. I live on a busy corner. <laughs> so I remove some of the paint from in between, which just gives you that basic look. And then when I pull that back, I get a whole other thing going on here. Now, one of the things that I do, oh, very cool. Mm -hmm. One of the things I do too, like if I find I have a lot of extra paint still on my brayer, I run it on a, another sheet of paper or I put it across the back of it. Mm -hmm. too, so kind of like get some of the extra paint off. Mm -hmm. And then nobody said you had to be neat and make sure that it's all blended together. Mm -mm. So if you just press your punchinella around, it actually picks up off of there. And you get all kinds of really interesting things happening in the background with very little effort. Yeah. And then you could let that dry, and you could come back with other colors and add more layers and foam layers. And, you know, here's actually one that has, like, a zillion layers on it, too. Mm -hmm. It's got, like, even a little um, Buddha down there. 
Yeah. Actually, that was a stencil. So, you know, think about adding different layers to it, you know, and different colors. This is this was a neat one I did, like a bleeding heart. Mm hmm You see all the, the layers and, and whatnot. That's all done with the jelly plate. And then the other, what I'm doing right here on the side is the other thing that happens when you touch all those stencils and things onto the paint is that you have this other totally separate residual paint effect. So don't forget the paint that's left on your tools while you're doing this. Definitely. Definitely. We got some really cool Punchinella um, online. This is a, a really neat one. This was like a square Punchinella. Mm -hmm. I really like the look of that. See how, how cool it is up close? Yeah. I actually did a whole mixed media piece using this Punchinella. So you can find a lot of different Punchinellas online if you look around. Um, Punchinella is actually sequin waste. So when they make sequins, it's what's left over. And you can definitely do cool stuff with it. Yeah. Yeah, I found on, um, on Artfire is where we found that person. Yeah. I believe they're called Gauch Al Alchemy, G-A-U-C-H-E Alchemy, A-L-C-H-E-M-Y. And I just got an email from her because she moved to Japan. Oh. And I got an email from her today. Her shop is back open. So okay. look for her on artfire.com. And let me tell you, they're not expensive. You can get a, a, P a giant piece for like 70 cents. Yeah, that's what we did. We ordered like a piece of everything that she had. Yeah. Um, actually, all right, you might hear some noise because I'm pulling this down. It's, I have it. Yeah. <laughs> Here's one of the pieces. Now, you see Kira's doing the circles there, and that's a stencil. Mm-hmm. And here, this one is Punchinella. So you can, you know, think about using different things in different ways. So, you know, when you think about all the um, complex backgrounds that, that you find, like, on scrapbooking paper, mm -hmm. you know, that this process can create some really complex looking things. And then if you have a nice quality camera or even a scanner, you can scan your prints into your computer. You can make your own backgrounds for things if you like to do digital art absolutely because once you make these these are your own creations you scan them and we did this we scan them into our computer and then you could print it out and use it again and again and again so if you make a print that you absolutely love and you don't want to cut it up and use the pieces scan it in your com into your uh, scanner save it in your computer and then you can print it out yeah Yep, there are just so many ways um, to use this that we might have to do a class. Yeah, you know, because, I mean, you know when, you, when you do what I'm doing, which is basically just play with some colors and supplies, you get all kinds of different effects. But you can actually plan what, what's going to happen after you practice for a little while and you, and you know like the predictable results. Yeah. yeah, this was one of those punchinellas that's like a flower, like what Kira was showing you. See up close? Mm hmm. So that's called punchinella. But really, I mean, the sky is the limit. There's no doubt about it. And these jelly plates are really a blast to work with. We love them. So you will be seeing a lot more stuff that we made with the jelly plates. And as we come up with more ideas, we'll be sharing them with you. But, you know, look at things differently. I mean, even something like a simple doily. You know, say you have, I, I can't even tell you how many times I go to thrift stores or, or yard sales and they have tons of doilies and they're all stained. And you're like, okay, well, what the heck am I ever going to do with a stained doily? Well, <laughs> hello. You could lay this right on the jelly plate. Uh, you know, it gets some really cool looks with just something like this. You know, this one doesn't happen to be stained, but, you know, if you find stained ones and they're selling them for a quarter, 50 cents, pick them up, throw them in the laundry in a bag or whatever, and then think about using them to print. Because this is a super cool look. I mean, imagine that, printed. So, right. So, yeah, I mean, 
I mean, look how easy that was to clean up. It's it's back in the package now, all clean. I yep. run my brayer under the sink, and I'm basically done. Yeah, and you can use um, that hand sanitizer to help. Like, if you have any of the paint that's a little tricky to get off, they recommend using hand sanitizer to help clean it. So that's another tip. So soap and water or hand sanitizer will do the trick. So definitely check out the Jelly Plate. Um, they have a website. And I believe it's jellyplate.com or is it jelly art, jelly, jellyarts.com. You're muted, Kira. So no <laughs> you got on mute. <laughs> Yay! Yeah. Yeah, there <laughs> she is. There she is. Uh, it's Jelly Arts. Jellyarts.com. Yep. Yep. Definitely check them out. And um, actually, we have a link on our craftylink.com site as well that you can get directly there too. Um, one of the things that Kira and I have going on also is a new site called Dream Your Success that we want to share with you. And we are going to be having a webinar coming up May 10th. And you guys are invited to come. It's, I believe, 11.30 Eastern Standard Time. And it's a free webinar. And if you're interested in, in growing your business, if you want to learn how to sell online, um, all these things that, you know, you may not know where to start, well, we're going to give you an idea. And uh, you can definitely check out the website at dreamyoursuccess.com and kind of see what we're up to there and, and sign up for the free webinar. Yes. And please... Share this video with your friends on Facebook, Pinterest, any place else that you are hanging out online because we want everybody to learn these things. They're so much fun and we're all about sharing. Yep. So don't be shy. Share it around. And if you haven't signed up for our newsletter, all of our new stuff that we have going on ends up in the newsletter. And you can do that at uh, thingscrafty.com. Or polymerclaytv.com. We have you can sign up for the newsletters at any of those places, mm -hmm. and you can definitely find our community at craftylink.com. And there is always a ton of stuff coming up, going on there. And I know that several of our design team members have uh, demoed the jelly plates too, so you can see what they've done with that. Yes. So definitely check that out. So thanks for joining us today, and we will see you in two weeks. See you in two. <laughs>